Yeah, so hello everyone. Today we have a very special guest on our channel. We have Aryan Chaudhary, who's a Grand Master on Code Forces. So Aryan, welcome on my channel. Would you like to introduce yourself once? Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Aryan. I go by username Aryan C four zero two on almost all the all of the platforms. And yeah, and I am Grand Master on Code Forces and a Snapdown finalist as well. And yeah, that's all I need. Yeah, and so I remember like two years back, I messaged Aryan. He was a master at that time, and I saw on one of his code share pro profile that he has written that Code Forces Road to Red and getting rank under eighty. So I would like to congratulate you on becoming red on Code Forces. So I would like to ask you, how has your how has your computer programming journey been? Like starting from the bottom and coming all the way to becoming Code Forces red. So how has your computer programming journey been? So yeah, regarding my competitive programming journey, it was mostly like when I, like everyone in India, like everyone prepares for JEE. So I, I also prepared for JEE in my twelfth, and when I finally got an admission in IIT Kanpur, right? then few of my seniors before joining college suggested me to try out for some C course or learn some programming because that's one of the mandatory course in the first year. And yeah, a lot of people used to struggle in that. So someone gave, I just went to someone, and he was a very good teacher. He taught me a lot of basic of C. So yeah, and after that, I just did, I just learned the basics of C at that moment of time, and I joined college. And around one or two months into the college, we generally have a process programming conference. And their problems are similar to a normal code forces round as well. Yeah. So I tried that, although I did wasn't placed in a, on a good rank. But yeah, that was something where I found what exactly CP is. Hmm. And after that, back in the first semester, I didn't had a laptop with me. So we used to go to CC Computer Center in IIT Kanpur and try out some problems over there. And it mostly started in the December. Of my first semester, just before the second semester, I had that mandatory course in the second semester, where and that was when I open I I used to spend a full winter vacation over there, and I was solving random problems in easy section of course of sorted by the most difficult, and I probably solved around seventy to eighty problems over there. Until then, I didn't knew any website other than course of. And after that, I probably found out something about code forces is when some of my seniors suggested to me. And in the next vacation in May was when I really started doing code forces. Probably, if you look at my submission, first contest was in March, yeah. and that was that's around five to six months after my first submission on code And yeah, probably, and after that, I am just doing it. Okay, so you started in first semester. You're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, how has your journey been like becoming red? Like, so there was a around two years gap, right, from being a master to becoming red. So, how was that like from going from master to becoming a grand master? No, like two years back, my peak was two three nine three. Yeah. And right now it's around two four point zero or something. Yeah. So although the difference is around fifteen to twenty rating points, <laughs> but yeah, the difference yeah. is two months earlier. So it has been mostly like at that point of time I was at my peak and the major complaint I had was there aren't enough code forces around. Yeah. Right? And that was the time when there used to be just one or two D one, and most of the time it was more like I am feeling I am in form, but then I see that code forces around is after fifteen days. If I perform well, <laughs> one needs at least two to three consecutive good yeah. rounds, and two to three rounds is mostly one month, and keeping up. On the top of yourself for one month is an easy job. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So many times I was rated more than two three seven five, but two four zero zero was a bar which I never touched. Okay. And yeah, after that, after my that peak around two years ago, I was mostly retired and I didn't do. Code. If you look at my graph, <laughs> I didn't do any code, any contest for next six months. I was more like yeah, it's done. And after that, I C P C came again. So to yeah. prepare for it, I started doing it again. And yeah, right now I am graduated from college, mm -hmm. but yeah, I am still doing it. So yeah. Okay. 
and one more thing so what advice would you give to people who are doing computer programming and are stuck at a certain rating for example many people are stuck at newbie level many people are stuck at pupil level or specialist level expert level so what advice would you give to people to go to get higher rating on code forces like what advice would you give right like, there are many ways and i have mostly tried almost all of them and right now i don't have any preference among them so people can probably try all of them or something and maybe some works for something and other works for others so like for example i have received education around back around 2 to 3 years ago i started from education around 1 and did around 50 to 60 education round i have also done the same with arc as well i started from the first arc which is english editorial and i received all of them until the 100 education round was back when i was standard master and arc was back when around i was rated average rated around 2200 and probably some people ask topic wise and that's something which i have never done so my practice so far has been mostly like first participate in a contest and then try to solve one or two problems more than what you have done in the contest look at editorial of them and right now the editorials are a lot elaborate on code process mm -hmm. back then so they were too small and one has to try and, and think a lot even after the editorial yeah. so that was a good thing and i learned most from course of long challenge that's what i say to everyone these days so they aren't even rated for the one mm -hmm. And if you look at my contest history on Coursera, I have participated in almost all long challenges for around 18 to 20 months. And those 10 days were more like if I don't know anything, I used to Google up and I used to sometimes find some new algorithms, read about it in co different code courses blog and then implement it and then get an essay on it. Like first time I remember I learned about central decomposition was in some very long challenge. And I didn't knew what exactly is central decomposition before the start of the contest. And by the end of contest, I had an ACL problem with my own implementation. So yeah, those 10 days were more like I used to have some problems. I don't have any choice but to try them. And then mm -hmm. I learned a lot. And that was mostly when I got an implementation practice of a lot of things. So sometimes there used to be something which required a lot of implementation. But yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is to improve, the main thing is to give contests like long contests, short contests and then solve problems and then learn the algorithms and topics from that. Like that's the best way to improve, yeah. right? So like, yeah, like people often try getting a list of them and they see whether they, they would first learn everything in this list and then give contests. And I believe that's not the way. You should mm -hmm. go there, try it and if you find something new, then you can learn it then and there and next time when it comes, you can just apply it. Okay, and one more thing is there a lot of prop a lot of people face the problem of demotivation in computer programming. So there are various times that you do not like you do not perform the way you expected yourself to, and you lose your rating. You like a lot of times that kind of problem happen, and people get demotivated. They stop computer programming because of that. A lot of people quit because they lose so many ratings. They perform bad in so many rounds. So how do you personally beat demotivation yourself and how would you suggest others to beat demotivation while doing computer programming? So it was mostly like when I am participating, I am more like I just need 100, 200 and to get to red. And at the end of a contest when I see myself, I am around 500, 600 somewhere. So after two, three such performance, I stopped participating. Yeah, that's what everyone do. And when I tried again, I random the one doing virtually doing it. I realized yeah, I can come 200 again. So yeah, that's when I really started participating again. If you fear about rating, you can probably try a virtual contest. And the moment when you feel you are confident enough, you can try rating. And add coder these days, so even allow you to register and get it during the contest. And one thing which I would recommend everyone is doing add coder ABCs. They are really good. It is for of your rating unless you are rated more than 2800 so like these days i often part just let this on ad code and then try out class two problems because they are way too hard even for a grandmaster right now and similar goes for someone who is standard master e and f would be there which would be challenging for him and if someone is newbie or something a or b or c would be challenging for him 
so like ad coded abcs cover a large range and yeah that's one so i got okay how has computer programming helped you outside of computer programming outside of code forces code chef and also how has computer programming helped you in your college or in getting placed like the company you are at right now so how would you say computer programming has helped you in that way like i'm not sure probably i would be a lot wise but yeah like if you look at then if the company where i am right now it had few algorithm problems in the interviews and i felt those were easy problems to work on and yeah probably that's one way if you want to look outside code forces and code chef but yeah even if you look at code chef also i am a regular tester over there so it can be a freelance kind yeah. of thing so yeah and yeah apart from that so i probably didn't try but yeah apart from if you just want to look outside the computer then i took one advanced algorithm course in my college and i and i found those challenges were really those problems were really challenging one like one of the problem in hard in the exam was had was had the difficulty compared to one d1f and topic taught there at that time was max flow and i specifically knew this would be the problem which would be as in exam okay, because i knew this is the most this would be the most hardest thing and i have seen that in one day one yeah. although i didn't got an ac on it but i knew it explicitly i told them <laughs> and yeah my prediction was right on that and eventually i got an a in that course as well yeah basically i got a and a star in all the courses which had direct or indirect with me whether it was for your introduction to programming course or second year data structure and algorithms or some third year course advanced data structure uh, algorithms which often a lot of i am from electrical background but a lot of people from cac major also struggle doing those courses and those courses were compulsory for them so yeah okay Okay, and the last question I have for you is kind of a very debated topic, very discussed topic. So a lot of people discuss over YouTube what's the correlation between placements and computer programming. So you have achieved a lot in computer programming. So I just want to ask you directly, how would you say? Would you say computer programming help helps people in getting placed, or do you think computer programming is a little bit separate from the process of placements? Like, what is your take on that? Uh, I probably feel it's an overkill if someone wants a placement or something. Lead code is a way to go, and I have solved around three hundred problems on lead code. Oh. And when when I gave my placement, I solved something test for on campus placements. What I found was problems I was solving on lead code were the, almost the same problem appearing the next day. Yeah. While if you look at code forces, you won't find those D one A Bs. in those mm, days exactly so if someone has two short time around 6 months or one year then they should better try on lead code and the probability of problem they solve on lead code getting in the test next day is way too high compared to doing it on code forces mm-hmm. so whenever someone who just has some cash around after 6 months who is in his third year or fourth year i mostly recommend them to go for lead code and interview with rather than going for code forces Although, and probably in my case, I was doing it for a very long time, so yeah, that may have helped me a lot. But yeah, that's all. Right. Yeah, so that's what. In the end, even you went for lead code for placement preparation, right? Which is more relevant. Yeah. Lead code is more relevant for placement preparation, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's it, I guess, for the video. Thanks a lot for coming on my channel and sharing your journey and sharing your knowledge with all the viewers and all my subscribers. So thank a lot for being a part of my channel. Thank you. Thank you.